So this video came from a question I had the other day. Who was the greatest woman in history? And by greatest, I mean that in the Catherine the Great sense of powerful and influential, and not so much in the Frosted Flakes sense of more than good, they're great. Now obviously that's a flawed question from the get-go because there is no objective or even very reasonable way of deciding such things. A convincing case could be made for everyone from the very modern Angela Merkel to Empress Wu Zetian of China. But if I was in the business of arguing about it, which I quickly decided I'm not, I'd be in the corner of the first and I'd say the most powerful and influential woman pharaoh. Hatshepsut. Now before we get started here, it's always a bit tricky when dealing with ancient Egyptian history to get an understanding of time. Hatshepsut was born in 1508 BCE, which we tend to lump into the category of a really, really long time ago, but this is not the same time period as, say, the building of the Great Pyramids at Giza, which were built in the so-called Old Kingdom. Hatshepsut was born over a thousand years after the building of the Great Pyramids, in a time period now known as the New Kingdom, although new is a bit relative here. Anyway, Hatshepsut was born the daughter of a great pharaoh, Thutmose I, a legend in his own right, but that's a story for another day. After her father's death, Hatshepsut married her half-brother, Thutmose II, who became the new pharaoh, although a much less impressive one. Thutmose II died fairly young, and following the death of Hatshepsut's half-brother, full husband, she became queen regent of Egypt, as Thutmose II's heir by another secondary wife, Thutmose III, was too young to become pharaoh. I do apologize for the fact that we are now on our third Thutmose of this video. They weren't very imaginative with names back then. Now, all of this that's happened so far has been pretty standard in terms of dynastic succession, Egypt had had several queen regents take temporary power in the stead of child heirs for brief periods of time. But where Hatshepsut broke from tradition and really changed things in Egypt was when she decided not merely to be temporary ruler, but to name herself Pharaoh descendant of the gods. She was the first woman to take this title and assert her authority as divine and unrelated to Thutmose III. The exact length of her reign is disputed, but most scholars place it around 20 years, in which she became one of the most successful pharaohs in Egyptian history. She oversaw some successful military campaigns early in her reign, but the whole of her rule was characterized by its peacefulness. She commissioned a great trade expedition to the land of Punt with five massive ships, where they brought back luxury goods, including 31 live myrrh trees, which is, by the way, the first example we have of transplanting foreign trees. Though her greatest accomplishment was probably the construction of her mortuary complex in what is now the Valley of Kings. The building is an early example of symmetry and architecture that predates the Parthenon by nearly a thousand years, and is also so grand that future pharaohs built their tombs alongside it, creating the Valley of Kings as we know it. So she was great, she did great things, you get the idea, but at the same time as all of this, Thutmose III has long since come of age, and been held back from his rightful position by Hatch. Hatshepsut. Then when Hatshepsut died in 1458 BCE of natural causes, Thutmose III finally gained his position as pharaoh. Then, for some yet unknown reason, several years into Thutmose III's rule, he decided to have every depiction of Hatshepsut destroyed effectively erasing her from history for thousands of years. We don't know for sure why this was done. It could be as simple as revenge against Hatshepsut for keeping him from power, or it could be that he was attempting to assert the right of males to rule, thus securing his right to dynastic succession. Whatever his reason, he was very successful in eliminating much of the information about Hatshepsut, effectively erasing her from the common history for thousands of years, until very recently when modern historians have begun to piece together her remarkable life. That's the thing about history, it has to be written down. I'd imagine from the time you were little, you've heard of King Tut. King Tut, or Tutankhamun, was not actually that significant of a pharaoh, but because his tomb was found nearly intact, we know a good bit more about him, and thus he is well remembered by history. Meanwhile, Hatshepsut, far greater and more influential in her time, was nearly forgotten. I'll see you next week for more history stories. This thing put the Hubble telescope in space, and damn it all if it didn't look beautiful doing it. So they let me into VIP, and then I, um, and then he came over again and said, after the show, do you want to meet Macklemore? And I said, yes.